Hi everyone, this is Nurse Anna from nursestudy.net and these are 25 generalized NCLEX questions. Enjoy. And if you would like one of our free audio books with NCLEX questions on ACX or Audible, the links are in the description below. Enjoy the questions. Question 1. A 72-year-old female patient with a history of atrial fibrillation is admitted with shortness of breath and fatigue. BNP is 1,200, and an echocardiogram reveals an ejection fraction of 35%. The nurse anticipates which initial intervention? A. Administer a bolus of 1 liter of normal saline. B. Initiate furosemide, Lasix, IV push. C. Administer metoprolol to slow the heart rate. D. Increase oral fluid intake. Correct answer, B. Rationale, a BNP of 1,200 and a low ejection fraction indicate heart failure with fluid overload. Furosemide, Lasix, is the appropriate intervention to reduce fluid overload and pulmonary congestion. Option A, fluids, would worsen the condition. Option C, metoprolol, is used in heart failure but is not the priority intervention in acute decompensation. Option D, increasing fluids, is contraindicated. Question 2. A 55-year-old male patient with a history of cirrhosis presents with confusion, asterixis, and ammonia levels of 112. The nurse should anticipate which order. A. Administer lactulose. B. Prepare for an emergency liver transplant. C. Start IV albumin. D. Restrict protein intake completely. Correct answer, A. Rationale. Hepatic encephalopathy is caused by elevated ammonia levels, leading to neurological symptoms such as confusion and asterixis. Lactulose helps excrete ammonia through the stool, improving mental status. Option B, transplant, is not an immediate intervention. Option C, albumin, may help but is not the priority. Option D, restricting protein, is outdated, moderate protein intake is recommended. Question 3. A patient with a spinal cord injury at C5 experiences sudden hypertension, BP210 over 110 mm of mercury, bradycardia, and a pounding headache. What is the priority nursing action? A. Administer IV hydralazine. B. Elevate the head of the bed to 45 degrees. C. Perform a digital rectal exam. D. Notify the healthcare provider immediately. Correct answer, B. Rationale, the patient is experiencing autonomic dysreflexia, a life-threatening condition triggered by noxious stimuli, e.g., full bladder, constipation, in spinal cord injuries above T6. Elevating the HOB decreases blood pressure and reduces the risk of stroke. Option A, hydralazine, is helpful, but not the first action. Option C, rectal exam, should only be performed after resolving the crisis. Option D, notifying the provider, is important but not the immediate action. Question 4. A patient is admitted with acute pancreatitis. Which lab value is most concerning to the nurse? A. Serum lipase, 1000 units per liter. B. Blood glucose, 280 mg per deciliter. C. Calcium, 6.8 mg per deciliter. D. AST, 50 units per liter. Correct answer, C. Rationale, hypocalcemia, less than 8.5 mg per deciliter, in pancreatitis is a sign of severe disease and may indicate fat necrosis. Schwastex and Trousseau signs may be present. While lipase, A, and glucose, B, are elevated in pancreatitis, low calcium is a priority finding. AST, D, is mildly elevated but not critical. Question 5. A 30-year-old pregnant woman, 32 weeks gestation, is diagnosed with preeclampsia with severe features. Which assessment requires immediate intervention? A. 2 plus deep tendon reflexes. B. Urine protein of plus 3. C. Blood pressure of 165 over 110 mm of mercury. D. Respiratory rate of 10 breaths per minute. Correct answer, D. Rationale, a respiratory rate of 10 can indicate magnesium toxicity, 
which can cause respiratory depression and cardiac arrest. The therapeutic level of magnesium is 4 to 7 milliequivalent per liter, and toxicity occurs above 8 milliequivalent per liter. The nurse should stop magnesium sulfate and administer calcium gluconate. Question 6. A patient on a heparin infusion for a deep vein thrombosis, DVT, has an APTT of 105 seconds. What is the nurse's next action? A. Stop the heparin infusion and notify the provider. B. Administer protamine sulfate. C. Reduce the heparin rate by 50%. D. Document the finding and continue monitoring. Correct answer, A. Rationale, the therapeutic APTT range for heparin therapy is 46 to 70 seconds. A level of 105 seconds indicates high bleeding risk. The nurse should stop the infusion and notify the provider before administering protamine sulfate, B. Question 7. A patient with an acute ischemic stroke is prescribed TPA, Alteplase. Which finding requires the nurse to withhold the medication? A. Blood glucose of 90 mg per deciliter. B. BP of 170 over 95 mm of mercury. C. Onset of symptoms 5 hours ago. D. Platelet count of 180,000. Correct answer, C. Rationale, TPA is only given within 3 to 4.5 hours of stroke symptom onset. A delay beyond this time frame increases the risk of bleeding. Blood pressure, B, can be treated with IV labetalol before TPA administration. Question 8. A child with epiglottitis presents with strider, drooling, and difficulty breathing. What is the priority nursing intervention? A. Perform a throat exam with a tongue depressor. B. Prepare for emergency intubation. C. Obtain a throat culture. D. Administer albuterol nebulizer. Correct answer, B. Rationale, epiglottitis is a medical emergency caused by haemophilus influenza that can lead to airway obstruction. The priority action is securing the airway. Never use a tongue depressor, as it can trigger complete airway occlusion. Question 9. A patient with Addison's disease is experiencing nausea, vomiting, and confusion. BP is 80 over 50 mm of mercury, and blood glucose is 55 mg per deciliter. What is the nurse's priority intervention? A. Administer IV hydrocortisone. B. Give 50% dextrose IV push. C. Start IV normal saline with potassium chloride. D. Monitor urine output. Correct answer, A. Rationale, this patient is in Addisonian crisis, which requires immediate corticosteroid replacement, hydrocortisone IV. Hypoglycemia, B, and hypotension, C, are secondary concerns, but steroid administration is the priority. Question 10. A patient on digoxin reports nausea, dizziness, and seeing yellow halos around lights. Which lab value should the nurse assess first? A. Serum potassium. B. Serum digoxin level. C. Blood glucose. D. Serum sodium. Correct answer, A. Rationale, hypokalemia increases digoxin toxicity risk. Digoxin toxicity symptoms include GI distress, bradycardia, and vision changes. Potassium should be assessed before digoxin levels, as low potassium exacerbates toxicity. Question 11. A patient with septic shock has a MAP of 55 mm of mercury, lactate of 5 mm per liter, and urine output of 10 ml per hour. What is the priority intervention? A. Start a norepinephrine drip. B. Administer a 30 ml per kilogram bolus of IV fluids. C. Give vancomycin IV immediately. D. Obtain blood cultures. Correct answer, B. Rationale, in septic shock, the priority is fluid resuscitation to improve MAP, goal greater than 65 mm of mercury. Norepinephrine, A, is used only if fluids fail. Blood cultures, D, are done before antibiotics, but are not the immediate priority. Question 12. 
A postoperative patient with a PCA pump is unresponsive with a respiratory rate of 6 breaths per minute. What should the nurse do first? A. Administer naloxone IV push. B. Initiate a rapid response. C. Stop the PCA pump. D. Apply oxygen via non-rebreather mask. Correct answer, A. Rationale, this patient is an opioid-induced respiratory depression. Naloxone, Narcan, reverses opioid effects and is the priority intervention. Stopping the PCA, C, is necessary, but not the first action. Question 13. A pregnant patient at 36 weeks presents with vaginal bleeding, abdominal pain, and a rigid uterus. What is the priority action? A. Assess fetal heart tones. B. Administer IV fluids. C. Prepare for emergency C-section. D. Check the patient's hemoglobin level. Correct answer, C. Rationale, placental abruption is a medical emergency requiring immediate delivery. The fetus is at risk of hypoxia and maternal hemorrhage. Checking fetal heart tones, A, is important but delays life-saving intervention. Question 14. A patient with diabetic ketoacidosis, DKA, has serum potassium of 5.8 milli equivalent per liter and blood glucose of 500 mg per deciliter. What is the nurse's next action? A. Administer IV regular insulin. B. Give sodium bicarbonate IV push. C. Administer potassium chloride IV. D. Start an insulin drip and hold potassium replacement. Correct answer, A. Rationale, IV insulin lowers blood glucose and potassium by shifting potassium into cells. Giving potassium, C, is contraindicated. Sodium bicarbonate, B, is only used in severe acidosis, pH less than 7.0. Question 15. A patient with Guillain-Barre syndrome reports increasing dyspnea and is using accessory muscles to breathe. What is the nurse's priority action? A. Obtain a peak flow measurement. B. Prepare for intubation. C. Administer IV immunoglobulin. D. Monitor oxygen saturation continuously. Correct answer, B. Rationale, Guillain-Barre syndrome can cause respiratory failure due to progressive paralysis. Intubation should be prepared early when signs of respiratory distress occur. Question 16. A patient with a gunshot wound to the chest has a tracheal deviation to the right and absent breath sounds on the left. What is the priority intervention? A. Administer high-flow oxygen. B. Prepare for needle decompression. C. Start an IV line for fluid resuscitation. D. Apply a non-occlusive dressing to the wound. Correct answer, B. Rationale. Tension pneumothorax requires immediate needle decompression to release trapped air. Oxygen, A, will not resolve the pressure buildup. Question 17. A patient on a ventilator with ARDS has a PaO2 of 55 mm of mercury on 100% FiO2. What ventilator adjustment should the nurse anticipate? A. Increase tidal volume. B. Increase PEEP. C. Decrease respiratory rate. D. Increase FiO2 further. Correct answer, B. Rationale, in ARDS, PEEP is increased to keep alveoli open and improve oxygenation. Increasing FiO2, D, further can cause oxygen toxicity. Question 18. A patient with status epilepticus is receiving IV lorazepam. What is the priority assessment? A. Oxygen saturation. B. Blood pressure. C. Pupillary response. D. Deep tendon reflexes. Correct answer, A. Rationale, IV benzodiazepines can cause respiratory depression. Oxygen saturation must be monitored continuously. Question 19. A patient with a C4 spinal cord injury reports a severe headache and sweating. What should the nurse do first? A. Check the blood pressure. B. Administer hydralazine IV. C. Check for bladder distension. D. Place the patient in high Fowler's position. Correct answer, D. 
Rationale, autonomic dysreflexia requires immediate elevation of the head of bed to lower blood pressure. The trigger, i.e., bladder distension, should then be resolved. Question 20. A patient with COPD is receiving 4 liters per minute of oxygen via nasal cannula. Their SpO2 is 91% and they report dyspnea. What is the nurse's next action? A. Increase O2 flow rate to 6 liters per minute. B. Encourage pursed lip breathing. C. Administer albuterol via nebulizer. D. Check arterial blood gases. Correct answer, B. Rationale, pursed lip breathing improves oxygenation in COPD by preventing air trapping. High oxygen levels, A, can suppress respiratory drive in COPD patients. Question 21. A patient with a suspected basilar skull fracture is admitted after a motor vehicle accident. The nurse notes clear drainage from the patient's nose. What is the priority nursing action? A. Insert a nasal airway to prevent airway obstruction. B. Test the fluid for glucose. C. Suction the nasal cavity to prevent aspiration. D. Administer IV mannitol to reduce intracranial pressure. Correct answer, B. Rationale, clear drainage from the nose following head trauma suggests cerebrospinal fluid, CSF, leakage. CSF can be tested for glucose to confirm the presence. Inserting anything into the nose, A, C, could worsen the injury. Question 22. A patient with cirrhosis has new onset confusion, ascites, and asterixis. Which physician order should the nurse question? A. Low sodium diet. B. Spironolactone, 25 mg, PO. C. Acetaminophen, 1000 mg, every 6 hours. D. Lactulose, 30 ml, PO. Correct answer, C. Rationale, acetaminophen is hepatotoxic and should be used cautiously in liver disease. Lactulose, D, is given to lower ammonia levels, and spironolactone, B, helps manage ascites. Question 23. A patient receiving vancomycin IV develops flushing, pruritus, and hypotension during the infusion. What is the priority intervention? A. Stop the infusion and administer epinephrine. B. Slow the infusion rate. C. Prepare for emergency intubation. D. Administer diphenhydramine IV push. Correct answer, B. Rationale, this is red man syndrome, a rate-dependent reaction. Slowing the infusion can prevent further symptoms. Epinephrine, A, is used for anaphylaxis, not this reaction. Question 24. A patient with a newly placed tracheostomy is showing signs of respiratory distress. The tracheostomy tube has dislodged. What is the nurse's next action? A. Reinsert the tracheostomy tube using sterile technique. B. Cover the stoma with a sterile dressing. C. Use a bag valve mask, BVM, to ventilate the patient. D. Call for rapid response and remain with the patient. Correct answer, C. Rationale, if a tracheostomy tube dislodges, ventilating with a BVM over the stoma is the priority to maintain oxygenation. Do not blindly reinsert the tube, A, without trained personnel. Question 25. A patient receiving warfarin, Coumadin, therapy has an INR of 6.2. What should the nurse anticipate? A. Administering vitamin K. B. Increasing the warfarin dose. C. Administering protamine sulfate. D. Encouraging the patient to eat leafy greens. Correct answer, A. Rationale, an INR greater than 5.0 increases the risk of bleeding. Vitamin K reverses warfarin effects. Protamine sulfate, C, is the antidote for heparin, not warfarin.